we breathed again, because once we were outside, if you like, the firing line, and I was so grateful that there was no nearby airfield so that we could decompress ourselves, sort ourselves out. I got my ship's company organized, as, as the other two commanding officers did, um, sort out their ship's company into, exercise, into a routine of training as much as we could do on board the QE2. And the three, three commanding officers, there was me, um, Alan West, who was commanding uh, Ardent, and David Hartdyke, who was commanding Coventry, and we commanding officers discussed, debated, worried, agonized over the decisions that we had made. Were we right? Were we wrong? Did we do this? There was a lot of, a lot of um, talk. But thankfully, it was so good to have two other commanding officers with me so that I didn't have to agonize by myself, if you will. So we all ha had had similar responsibilities. And that was a great relief. And when we eventually returned home on the 11th of June, um, we, by that stage, we'd already submitted our reports of what had happened to our ships to the Commander-in-Chief, knowing that there would be a board from Quarry, which I mentioned earlier. And we, we were greeted by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, and I think a couple or three um, jet aircraft that flew low overhead and give our, gave our hearts a different form of flutter, as you can imagine. And as we entered um, Southampton, there were a couple of what I call budding Erica Rose. Erica Rowe um, was um, a young woman who displayed all at a rugby match at Twickenham in only January 1982. So that brought a smile to our faces. And then we were met, of course, by our families and we then life continued for a bit.